Economic platforms and promises for the parties in this year's federal election are starting to come out. While many of the issues look to address risk to Canada's economic growth prospects, are the campaigns hitting the right notes? Former Bank of Canada governor and senior advisor at Bennett Jones joins us now. David Judge, thanks so much for joining us in studio. Good to be here this morning. So it's interesting. Obviously, the economy always factors into these campaign elections, but it's not like this is a financial crisis type of election. There are gives and takes. Just how would you characterize the overall assessment where Canada's economy sits as we head into an election? Well, obviously, people there think that it sits pretty well. Uh, so the normal themes of jobs and growth really haven't, uh, haven't come up, and it's more pocketbook worries, day-to-day -day worries. So I guess the real question is, is that reasonable or are people a little overly optimistic? I guess the, the most likely uh, outcome is that we will have a little bit softer growth, but reasonable growth. Reasonable being within three or four or five tenths of a point of our potential, which is something just below two. Uh, so that that would be the best sort of most likely view. But I, this is a time of great uncertainty um, caused on the political side, um, by political side, caused by the normal problems that one might expect in the Middle East, uh, tensions in the South China Sea and so on. And, and I think there is an abnormally high degree of uncertainty in part because we can't be quite sure how the American administration is going to deal with events as they come up. And so the general confidence that one has always had that essentially we knew what the lay of the land was, maybe the occasional war or, or a spike in oil prices, but essentially we knew what the lay of the land was, and it was a land where international trade was ever expanding and one could continue to extend one's supply lines. That we're not sure of anymore. In fact, we're quite unsure of that. And so it's very hard to make a prediction um, of exactly where things are, are going to go. And so uncertainty, I think, is in that sense the key. And when things are uncertain, business and consumers will tend to sit on their hands. So we'll tend to be a little bit below uh, if nothing goes wrong. If something goes wrong, then we really have to be prepared to deal with it in a world where we will lack the sort of American leadership that we have experienced um, in the previous half century. Let's tie that back to some of the political polling uh, data. We showed some of the new Nanos polling right now when it comes to the, the various parties and where they stand. Um, and right now, as we look at, at this election polling data, it shows us uh, the Liberals um, getting the nod over the Conservatives right now, but obviously these numbers are changing every day. You talked about pocketbook issues being at the center of the economic story that uh, Canadians are thinking about, as opposed to jobs. There are, are a lot of jobs in this country right now. Um, given your, your views on where the economy is and, and some of the economic themes that are, that are driving the campaign right now, what do you make of those polling numbers? Do they surprise you? Um. Well, I live in Ottawa, and I've learned never to be surprised by, by those numbers, and that if you live there, it's very hard to know exactly what, what's going on in, in, in the country. But there is a much greater sense of economic security in the country at the moment than really might be warranted. And, and as you mentioned all of these issues, it struck me that, you know, what we've heard so far about cell phone, uh, cell phone plans and, and affordability, uh, those major things about how we tackle uncertainty, our relationship with the United States, 
uh, Canada's relative competitive position versus global companies haven't really cropped up right. during the exactly. election. I mean, does that surprise you? I mean, the, the, maybe competitiveness doesn't mobilize voters the way reducing your cell phone bill does. Well, you know, I'm a member of the Economist Party, and the one thing we know is the Economist Party could never get elected, right? So it, it, it doesn't really uh, surprise me. I think it's unfortunate because we're missing an opportunity to take some steps going forward. Um, I mean, the, you add up the promises and essentially everybody, even in a good world, is, seems to be heading us towards a 2 or 3 percent of GDP deficit, either that or some tax hikes. Um, and that, I think, is a bit worrying. And the fact that there has not been an alternative position, the fact that the word deficit or debt really doesn't figure in this campaign right. as it has in the past, um, I think means that, that we're overlooking uh, uh, issues out there. And uh, that could well change by the time we're one year into a mandate. Could, could I just jump in, David, there? Because, I mean, if we watch the markets, uh, I think as we came into this year, we were starting to see momentum, interest rates moving higher, and the markets were starting to reset on that realization. And then as we move through 2019, we kind of reset the clock on that. Certainly, we watch what our neighbors in, in, in the United States have been doing. The Bank of Canada has been basically on hold for now. But do you think that issue of debt loads and um, can I pay my bills would have been a bigger campaign issue if we hadn't seen a, a reversed course of sorts with some of the central banks around the world on raising interest rates? Yeah, I, I think you're right. I I think that that's correct. Uh, I, I think the really interesting issue is that if we look around the globe, at the moment we seem to be either for demographic reasons or for uncertainty reasons or whatever, but we seem to be generating excess savings around the globe, which means that it's absolutely appropriate, not that central banks are fiddling around, but that interest rates uh, would be low in that circumstance. And we may be in to a period of relatively low interest rates uh, for a period of time until that, I mean, if we use Ben Bernanke's words, that, that savings glut. But it, it's a mix of relatively high savings due to demography and uncertainty and relatively low investment due to the uncertainty factor. And it's that combination. And as long as that is sitting there, one might anticipate a period of, of really relatively low interest rates, not because central banks are fiddling around, but just because there's a surplus of savings out there in the world. And that's quite a different world than we imagined. Uh, and so I think there's a bit of a feeling there. And if that's the case, then it is true that high debt loads per se do not necessarily imply high debt service loads per se, right? And it's the high debt service load, especially if it, that is combined with uh, a rise in unemployment that has always, it has historically uh, been the trigger for uh, a real decline. So monetary policy, it sounds like we're, you're saying that we are in for a new era and, and maybe it's lower for longer, for much longer than we had forecasted. And I wonder, does fiscal stimulus need to also experience a similar paradigm shift? Because over the time of these low interest rates, fiscal stimulus in various jur jurisdictions has been inconsistent. Um, do you think that we need to be having a broader conversation about, well, where is fiscal stimulus in all of this. Absolutely we do. Um, and what is appropriate? So if you think we're bouncing along at something a little below but close to potential, then running annual deficits at the federal level of 1% of GDP, that's absolutely the sort of right place to be. Um, if, on the other hand, you think that there's a real chance that, that we've got if you will, an investment strike. I, I, I hesitate to use that word, but very low levels of investment. And hence, 
demand efficiency on a global basis persisting, uh, then, uh, then we ought to be thinking, especially in the Western democracies, which are faced with a uh, aging populations, uh, and we, we really ought to be thinking about more permanent um, uh, deficits, or at least I, I, I'd really rather use the word that governments should be prepared to borrow considerable amounts to make the investments, whether it's in infrastructure or physical infrastructure, human infrastructure, moving electrons around, whatever, we ought to be prepared uh, to make those, uh, those investments uh, over a rather extended period of time. David, always good to get your perspective. We'll have you back after we get those election results, see what, what economic issues ultimately drove voters. Thanks so much. Good to see you. David Dodge, Senior Advisor at Bennett Jones and the former Bank of Canada Governor joining us here in studio.